Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 17 of the platform specific series of my 68,000 assembly programming tutorials. This week we're going to be looking at setting up the palette on the Amiga. We've done all of the other systems, and it's the Amiga's turn this week. Now, the Amiga palette is very simple it's one nibble per channel. The first nibble is unused, then there's one nibble for red, one nibble for green, one nibble for blue. Now, if you're not familiar with these tutorials, we also use one nibble per channel for all of our systems, and then we convert that for the system as required. Now, our format is similar, but the red and the green are swapped over. So we have an unused nibble, a green nibble, a red nibble, then a blue nibble. So we need to swap that over. Now, when it comes to the colors on the Amiga, if you remember, the Amiga can have potentially up to 32 colors, depending on the number of bit planes and depending on if we're using sprites. So the first 16 are the base ones, which we're going to be using as part of our background drawing because we don't currently use the sprites, but we will. And then the next 16 can be used for sprites if we want to, or if we're using more than four bit planes for the extra colors for 32 colors per screen. So first of all, let's see the example today running on an Amiga. So here it is. You can see we've got our Chibico character here and we've got some hello world message from the previous example. Now, what we need to look at is the background. The background's black. Then we've got purple hair, we've got cyan clothing and we've got white skin. Okay, so that's the palette we've defined. Now, when it comes to that palette, you can see it just here. As I say, we've got one nibble per channel here. So we've got a green nibble here, a red and a blue. And you can see that because the background is black, all of them are zero. The purple for the hair is a value of nine for red and blue, which makes a mid purple. And you've got the cyan here, almost full green, full blue, and the white is for red, green and blue. Now, when it comes to defining this palette, we're using a common function on all of our systems. We load the address of that palette definition, then we read in a word from that address into D1. D0 is the color number, and we call a function called set palette, which will actually do the work of setting the colors within the system. So that is a platform specific piece of code, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now, when it comes to defining the palette, we have a bit of an odd thing on the Amiga, which is exclusive to the Amiga. If you remember before when we were doing our screen definition, we used something called the copper list. The copper list is a function that is called by the system processor every time the screen is redrawn. And if we look at our bitmap memory function, maybe you remember part of that copper list was defining our screen colors. So rather than calling any kind of hardware to change our colors, what we do is we actually poke the new colors into that copper list. So you can see here, we've got the first 16 colors here and then the second 16 colors here. And all of these are being moved into the memory address A6, which is actually the copper list within this chip RAM just here. Of course, what we need to do is we need to change the last two bytes of each of these to change the colors. So this is the background color in effect, and we were defaulting to a dark blue, but we'll need to change this to two bytes of zero here when we want to change the background to black. Now, the way we do this is we back up the pointer to the start of the copper list palette definitions into the memory address defined as palette pointer. And you can see it just here. And that's going to allow us to be able to get the memory address within the copper list where we write our new color in Amiga format, and then the screen will automatically change the color as part of the next screen redraw. So that's how we're going to do things. Once we know that, once we've decided how we're doing that, it's all very straightforward. Effectively, what we need to do is just check that we've got a valid color. The Amiga can take up to 32 colors, as I've said. So if it's not, it just skip over. And then we need to work out the memory address within the copper lists palette addresses, which are defined by palette pointer here, as you can see, that we're going to write to. So what we do is we load the effective address of palette pointer, and then we just mask out any unused bytes from our palette selection here, which is in D0, and then we rotate to the left twice. This effectively quadruples the value of the pointer. So if we were changing color one, we would now have a pointer of four. That's because each entry in the copper list is four bytes. But the bottom two bytes are actually the definition of the graphics entry we want to change. So that would be color zero, color one, so on. So we actually then need to add two to offset to the second two bytes, which would effectively be changing these two because we want to leave these two the same because they are the actual selection of the color. So at this point, we've now actually calculated in A0 the address of the color that we want to change. Really, things are very straightforward for us now. All we need to do is split out each of the nibbles and swap over the red and the green because our definition in the example down here is green, red, blue. 
but we want to actually write red, green, blue into that copper list definition. So all we're doing is we're splitting them out and we're rotating the red component to the left by four bits and we're rotating the green component to the right by four bits and each time we're oring in the result into D2. Finally, we add in the blue because the blue doesn't change. Once we've got that new definition, we just write it into the address within the copper list that we calculated earlier and that's it done. So that's really all it is going to take to actually change our colors on the Amiga and you saw that in action earlier. So there we go, very straightforward really. Changing the colors on the Amiga is really easy. Now we're going to be looking at the sprites in a later lesson. So if you are interested in the Amiga and, or if you want to see the sprites in action, please follow my channel because we'll be covering that probably in a few weeks. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. It's very easy really once you know what to do. Thanks for watching and goodbye.